Antoinette Griffin, welcome to Titans of Transition today. Hello, Joe. Happy to be here. <laughs> it's great to have you. And of course, we know each other from the John Maxwell team. I'm really pleased to have you on the show because I think you have a unique uh, message for us of going from an employee to an entrepreneur. So tell us what that means to you. Oh, my gosh, Joe. You know, we we all have in our lives, you know, when we start out working what our goals are. And my goal was to just really be a be like a customer service manager at a call center. That oh. was that was my goal was call to center. provide good customer service, lead people, work at a big call center. And that was really my professional goal when I was starting out. What kind of organization were you at? Um, well, I used to work at Blue Cross Blue Shield. Oh, so boy. Yeah, that that's was, like, I'm sure you off. had a good call center there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Lots of lots of interesting calls. Um, and then, you know, it was eventually to to be, a, like I said, a leader of a call center of like a national national company. I um, always wanted to work for a big company. And um, so that that really was was my goal. So I didn't have these extravagant extravagant goals of having my own business by any means. How did you come to the conclusion that you wanted to venture out and do something entrepreneurial? Well, I didn't. <laughs> you didn't. <laughs> so, so my uh, husband, John Griffin, at the time, we had uh, just been married a, a few years and he had always had a very entrepreneurial spirit. And so we both um, had a, and still have a love for senior citizens. So we decided, he decided to come up with an idea for a business for senior citizens. And he was like, Hey, so what do you think? You know, one of us is going to have to take the, the plunge and uh, work this business uh, full time because, wow. you know, we can't do this just on our lunch hours. <laughs> um, somebody's got to be committed to this. And and basically, I wasn't really loving my job at that point. I was just mm -hmm. basically going and, you know, going through the motions Plus, he made more money than I did. And so I thought, <laughs> well, it makes sense for me to be the one to... To take the risk. Say, yes. To and say he's goodbye. the foundation, the backstop yes. financially. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So you launched off and, and you already you hinted at something. You weren't really feeling excited about your position at the time. So I'm just kind of curious about that. Can we kind of dig into that a little bit? What was the situation that caused you to feel like you wanted to make a change anyway, away from what you were doing? Well, you know, I, I don't know. At the beginning, it's like I didn't know what I wanted next. But I, I think that a lot of people are in that situation where they're in a comfortable job, mm -hmm. you know, drawing a good salary, um, doing things that are in their comfort zone that they get some enjoyment in. But when they look at the day to day that they look at, oh, my gosh, I'm really not happy and I'm really just working to Friday. You know, mm. we're working till five o'clock and working, you know, not being lazy, but really working, but not really getting any fulfillment from it. And, and I, I basically didn't know there were any other options out there. Um, until, like I said, he came up with the idea for this business, and then I took the leap and and left, which I never saw myself doing that. That's, you know, it's interesting because you were just talking about going through the motions and kind of being on this weekly cycle and waiting till Friday, getting a sense of what's right for us is really interesting. So I have this idea of gifts and people having gifts. You know, I'm a person of faith, so gifts from God. And we're not really fulfilled until we're really stepping into those gifts. So I'm wondering now if it's segueing into you moving into this uh, entrepreneurial venture, was there something that was in what you were going to do that you felt like aligned with your skills or maybe even your gifts? No, not really, because, not really, huh? you know, <laughs> 
the main <laughs> thing was that well well it was a publication and I love to write but the the main skill that this that it required was sales right just any business oh, wow. yeah and with any small business you got to get out there and and sell and so you know I remembered um I remember a mentor of ours asking uh asking me. He said, well, okay, so you're going to be the salesperson for this business. Have you ever sold anything before? And I said, well, Girl Scout cookies. <laughs> and I remember thinking, oh my gosh, I, I'm i not this aggressive person. I'm not this, you know, extroverted, you know, very, you know, charismatic person when I pictured salespeople. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, how is this going to work? Because I, not only is that my, not my personality, but I've never done anything like this before. So it was definitely out of my comfort zone. So, so no, I can't say that I had these skills and I was mm -hmm. moving towards this for this reason. Um, but, but I just took it one day at a time okay. and it was, it was the hardest thing I've ever done. Um, but it, I'm I'm so proud of of what I did as well. So you felt stretched by it, and and so what ended up happening? I mean, how did you? I mean, businesses do need business development and sales, and so you know when when you're an entrepreneur, you, you were wearing all hats, so you had to do that. You had to pick things up, I'm sure. But how did you get yeah. through that? Well, there's there's something, Joe, about when you don't know things, you tend to do things that that are outside the edges because you don't know what the edges are. So, you know, but that was back when, you know, we were all still using phone books and I would just get the phone book and I would think, OK, I think today I'm going to. I'm going to call, I'm going to start with the A's and I'm going to call some accountants in the phone book here. And so I would just go down the list and, and I would call people. Mm -hmm. Whereas it's so funny because, you know, these days we talk about, you know, oh, you got to qualify your leads and, you know, you do this stuff ahead of time and you had to have a funnel and, and <laughs> you put stuff out there. And then, you know, you, you, you then approach somebody with selling I would just call people up out of the phone book and say, hey, <laughs> this is my product. Would you like to meet on it? And, you know, looking back going, oh, my gosh, I didn't know there was any other way. So mm -hmm. that was the way that I did it. And so what, what ended up happening? I mean, uh, did you end up, did that organization grow? Did you end up making another shift later? I mean, kind of what what was the outcome of that? Yeah. So we ended up that that business lasted 18 years. Wow. And we ended up selling it after 18 years. So we expanded it. Um, you know, we started in Austin, Texas. We expanded it down into San Antonio and then Fort Worth and Dallas and ended up hiring other salespeople. But I did the sales in Austin for all of those 18 years. So I stayed on the front lines. Um, but but yeah, when I look back in the beginning, oh my gosh, it was very difficult. And just like you, I'm a person of faith too. And I honestly believe that, you know, the Lord and me, me and John and our prayers and uh, praying that, that this would work. Um, the Lord blessed that, but wow. he, it yeah. also required me to get out there and do the work too. Yeah. Yeah. You know, sometimes too, I think we assume that certain things we do have to be done in a very specific way. And if, and, uh, I have, I found out in my career that, um, I, I was a, a big risk taker and more a visionary and, um, I, I tended to have to trick myself into taking interest in things that I had to do, like budgeting, for example. I hated budgeting. And budgeting is so step by step and so analytical and I'm an intuitive and I'm like, Ugh, I can't. so I had I I changed the way I did budgeting every year. So I think I'll use this tool this year to start my budget just to get enough energy going to power myself through the process. And then once I was moving, I could get the things done that I had to get done. And then I also learned that, well, I'm not particularly good at doing certain things, so I enlisted people to do them for me. So I'm wondering how you worked with your own personal wiring 
you through that process, uh, through that business? Yeah, I think one of the things that I would tell myself is back when I was making those cold calls and and I would um I'm very I'm very process minded and so um I would make tick marks, you know? And I would make tick marks of how many calls I had made and at the end of the day, you know, it would be like, "Oh my gosh, you know, I made 35 calls and I only got two appointments." And then I would have to tell myself, Antoinette, that's two appointments more than you had before you made these 35 calls. So it was it was just this paradigm shift for me. Um, and then sometimes it was, OK, today I'm going to sit down and I'm going to make cold calls, you know, from this time to this time. And, and just parenting myself and forcing myself to go through those processes and um, and it did work. And I did learn that, you know, you don't have to be this aggressive salesperson. You don't right. have to be this extreme, extroverted, you know, outgoing person in order for you to be in good in sales and for people to want to buy from you. So talk a little bit about the introversion, the extroversion. And you just had you just published a uh, a another video on YouTube. Uh, you had ambiverts and what was the other category? Omniverts. Omniverts, which I think is fascinating. So tell us a little bit about that and how you got into the, and being interested in this particular area. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Joe. So uh, my, my life tagline that I gave for myself is formerly shy, forever introverted. <laughs> And um, because I used to be terribly, terribly shy. And most people don't know the difference between shyness and introversion. Shyness is a this fear of social judgment. So it's a it's you're you're shy um, because you're afraid of how you'll come across or you'll say the wrong thing or the kind of impression or what will people think of me. And I say fear. Some for some people it is a fear. For other people, it's just an uncomfortable feeling. But either way, that's shy. Whereas introversion is just you're in your head, you're you're thinking things through, you know, you can't be around a lot of people and a lot of noise and a lot of activity for long periods of time. But it's like I talk about in that video, it's a spectrum. You know, it's not just, you know, oh, this introvert's like every other introvert. Some people are more introverted than others. And same thing with extroverts. Um, and then ambiverts is somebody that's kind of close to the line between introversion and extroversion. And they kind of dance between the two um, just because their personality. They can be an extrovert. Um, in certain situations, they're more introverted in other situations, but they're not extreme. And then the omnivert is extreme. They're like one day they wake up and they're or in this situation, they're an ex extreme extrovert. And the next time you see them, they may be extremely introverted. So mm. it can be very confusing for people. You know, going, mm, oh, my mm. gosh, this person's acting completely different. So that's the differences between them. Um, but the the you said, how did, you know, I get involved, like I said, kind of moving from that formerly shy person to realizing, OK, I am introverted and celebrating that and, and helping other people that feel misunderstood or, you know, confusing shyness and introversion or some introverts are like hey I really do want to get out of my comfort zone it's just very difficult and so I, I love to love to come up with strategies um for introverts because I know how it feels I know what it's like <laughs> to have your de energy depleted and have other people totally not understand that yeah my wife is an introvert I kind of am I flip-flop depending on the situation, I guess. And I, I, maybe that's ambivert. Um, but uh, Barb is definitely an, an introvert. And after a, a little while, she will, she has to just be alone. And yes. I, I've learned over the years, just let her be. Yes. <laughs> let her recharge, let her do whatever she needs to do to refresh herself Um and not take it wrong because sometimes there's a withdrawal. There's there's a, a kind of a withdrawal thing that, that happens, right. and it's weird because I 
early on, I thought, how can she possibly say she's an introvert? Because she was a performer when we were young. She was a musician. She she had leads in musicals. You know, she taught music. She still, you know, she plays piano and sings. And so it's kind of like, how can you be upfront and be an introvert? You know, it's, it's those old paradigms that we've heard getting back to your statement about confusing shyness, you know, as being the, the driving definition of an introvert. I, I think that that, that uh, doesn't serve us well, understanding those things. Yes. And, and actually, I even though I was terribly shy growing up, I wanted to be in plays. I wanted to act. I wanted, um, I loved that because I was performing. So it wasn't yeah. me. It wasn't the Antoinette shy me. I could pretend like I was diff- somebody else. Ah, yeah, that's interesting. That's an interesting layer there. So, all right. So you sold the business after 18 years, mm-hmm. something like that. Yeah. So what then? So that's interesting because after 18 years, that's like raising a child, right? <laughs> and yes. um, and it was so, such a big part of my identity. Um, it was, it really was my identity because we, uh, my husband and I don't have children. And so it, this was like our child once we got married and we raised this child and then sent it off to college or in this case sold it. And um, so I still, that was my identity. So I had gotten certified as a speaker coach trainer through the Maxwell Leadership Team. Um, But when I would go out and introduce myself or when people would ask me, Mm -hmm. you know, what do you do? I would say, well, I'm a I'm a coach, speaker, trainer. And I used to own and I would say the name of the business and Uh. I would start explaining what I had done. And I would realize when I was doing it, I was thinking, Antoinette, you don't do this anymore. Why do you continue to do that? And I realized it was because that was my that that was my identity. And that's how people in the professional community knew me. So it was this other transition of, you know, moving from having that business to somebody who wasn't well known in this other area of expertise. So you got certified, you joined the Maxwell team before you sold the business. Yes. Is that right? Six years so were you, before selling it. Yes. So were you doing coaching and, and yes, speaking other both. things? So what caused you to 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 do that on the side? while you were still running the other business? Oh, because I've always been into personal growth. Um, okay. It's always been into personal growth. And, um, and, and by that time, the, the, um, the glamour of having the other business was fading. It was um, fading. Because, yeah. Yeah. And so I wasn't getting as much enjoyment out of it anymore. So right. seeing, okay, you know, do I really want to be doing this 10 years from now? And realizing that, you know, in the beginning, I thought I did. In the beginning, I thought, oh, my gosh, I want to do this forever. Um, But like so much happens in our lives, it was it was a good season. And so I was ready to do something else. Yeah, well, actually, that's a long period of time in today's today's standards, you know. And I was in a career, I was headed up IT, but I, which, you know, if you had a tenure of five years, you were like, an old person in your position because nobody ever, I mean, <laughs> there was so much turnover. 18 years is a long time. So uh, that's really interesting. So when you, uh, did you and John both move into the Maxwell team full-time? Cause you have Griff development too. So I'm wondering when that, did that come up before you sold the business was Griff development? Yes, coming? it was before. Yes. So we, we got both got certified at the same time. So we started that new business at that Griff time. development uh, while, while we had our other business. Yes. Got it. Got it. Yeah. So that's, that's interesting. So, so now you're doing this and I, of course you're in a leadership position. Both of you uh, are in leadership position in the Maxwell team. And um, you've been doing that for, for quite a while now, and there's so much going on there. So, but then you decided to uh, to uh, dabble in the YouTube area too, and start your podcast as well. So, is this just a natural extension of getting your influence out there, or did you feel like there was something else nudging you into 
being a content creator like that? Oh, well, first of all, I do not have a podcast, only YouTube. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Gotcha. Um, and I, I love writing and I've always, I've always loved content creation. And so once again, John, my husband said, <laughs> you know, you should probably record videos, you know, rather than just send out a written newsletter. And so I started recording videos, um, and, uh, of my content and then realized, well, I'm creating these videos, but the only people that are seeing them are people that are on like my email list. And so Mm -hmm. that's when uh, we got the idea of why not record them on YouTube. So I started, started doing that very slowly and was Mm -hmm. only doing one a month. And then two years ago, I went to, well, almost two years ago, I went to twice a month and then um, a little less than one year ago, went to um, one a week. Yeah, that's quite, I mean, it's, uh, doing that myself, that's, it's, it takes a long, a, a lot of effort and a lot of time. People may not yeah. understand that. Um, and especially the quality content you put out, I must say your content on your channel is more than just that though. I mean, you give other tips besides just talking about introverts and things of that nature, don't you? Yes, it's it's all around communication, confidence, charisma, leadership um, from an introvert's perspective. So some of it is is having to sure. do with for introverts. Some of it's having to do with understanding introverts. Um, I just made one um, just yesterday of how to prevent from overwhelming an introvert during the holidays. <laughs> and so some of it really is for more people that are extroverted, but want to build relationships and connection with introverts. Um, but yeah, so much of it has to do with, I find body language just fascinating. So, so much of it has to do with, you know, body language tips, you know, and, and appearing confident and charismatic. But I like to do everything from, you know, a inward authentic way rather than oh do this if you want to you know manipulate somebody you know it's never about- yes that's you know things like mirroring you know you, you you've got to check your ethics you know right you don't want, right you know yes, um, yes. because because even it's powerful yeah can be done in a good way and, yeah you know, absolutely for people that don't know what that is it's you know where you're mimicking well, mirroring, mimicking is probably not a good word, you know, someone else's, you know, um, body language, but it can be done in a good way if you're really trying to connect with that person. Right, right. Um, like, you know, if they move in and then you move in, yeah. um, but not to manipulate. Right. Yeah. So there's definitely responsibility there. So those are, those are powerful concepts. If you were to think back, what advice would you give to your, let's say, 22-year-old self? We'll pick 22 this time. Well, if you were starting over again with all your sage wisdom that you <laughs> <have today. laughs> Let's see. At 22, I was um, in a stable job. Like I said, just saw myself as, you know, with that employee mentality. Not that there's anything wrong with employees or having an employee mentality, but I didn't know there was more. I think it's always good for people to, if they want to make that choice to say, you know, no, I don't want to be a business owner. I would prefer to be an employee. But to me that I didn't think that that was something that I was even capable of. And so to realize going back and realizing that, you know, it, it is, yes, it's out of the comfort zone, but it's another area of life that, that I, I could do if I did it in little bitty steps and just did day by day, it's, you know, still going to be stressful. It's still going to be hard, but being able to push myself. Um, I think that's one of the most important things so that I would tell myself. push yourself towards the edge a little bit, try to move away from your comfort zone. Yes. Uh, you don't have to dive off a cliff, but you can you can take deliberate moves away from your comfort zone because really growth is out there. Exactly, and I'm and, very I'm very um, risk averse, and you know that safety and security, and so 
um, it does take a lot of effort to to get me there. Even still, you know, to this day, I I would love to be the kind of person that takes more risks. And in working with my coach, she's able to, to help me get there, which I really appreciate because it's difficult to do um, if I only have to answer to myself. Right, right. You know, but I think just dr- drilling into that a little bit, we are wired as human beings to maintain stasis or stay in the safe and the comfort areas. And I think that... Um, Often the answers aren't there. (laughs) And so having some strategy, having some way to venture out and even try things out. Sometimes I've coached people before where they're not sure what shift they want to make career-wise, but but they know they want to make a change, but they're stuck because they're so afraid that they'll make a mistake. And um, so I'll say, well, what's a what's a half step you could make to find out if that particular area is of interest? Why don't you set up an information interview or let me help you set up a conversation with someone who's doing that and chat with them to see whether or not that appeals or try to understand more about it. So it's, it's taking those smaller steps in that direction uh, is helpful because – you tend to view these shifts as huge, giant steps and that you can't even entertain them unless you dive off the cliff. But that's really not true. And I think building some um, some confidence and some, some muscle towards moving to that uh, non-safe zone or out of your comfort zone, we would say, is really helpful when you're exploring, you know, what to do next exploring what your next transition might be. Yes. And I love the way you said that the half step, um, Erica Hilliard, who uh, is the author of it's living, living with, uh, living fully with, uh, anxiety and living. I cannot remember the name of well, the book. I'll put it in the show notes. Okay, good. <laughs> Don't worry. But it is Erica Hilliard. And she writes in that book, it's a quote that I absolutely love, and that's no step is too small as long as it's a step outside of your comfort zone and knowing that any step is going to bring on anxiety Um, because that's what it's meant to do if it's out of your comfort zone. But it's not too small if it is outside of your comfort zone. Right, right. Yeah, that's really powerful. Do you have any active projects or things that you're currently working on that you're excited about? Oh, I'm surprising you on this one. I'm sorry. Well, that leads <laughs> to my another transition, um, oh. Joe. That that because I know this is all about transitions. So I, my husband and I moved to from Austin to Atlanta uh, five weeks before the pandemic started. So February of twenty twenty. <laughs> And um, so that's been a huge transition because I grew up in Austin and Texas. And so it was moving across the country, um, not knowing very many people, not knowing anybody on a social basis and and then starting over as far as creating a business here. I still have I still have clients in Texas, which is great. Mm But starting, you know, all over, you know, with new neighbors, with new friends, with new, you know, clients. And so that's been really uh, unique getting out there and and um, networking, you know, from going from a city where I would go to a networking group and I was bound to run into people I knew. Um, to going to a new city and nobody knows who I am or what I do. And so that's been uh, that's been a real transition. And so still doing a lot of work virtually, which is good, but trying mm-hmm. to get more and more plugged into the community. That is tough. And uh, we don't often talk about that. I, I don't often talk about that in terms of transitions, but uh, having, I think, I think we've had, 10 homes we've bought. So my poor wife has had to do ge- geography transitions way too many times. Not all of those were moves state to state, but there were, there were enough of them. And, uh, you know, it's hard, you know, because you have relationships with friends and the community, your church, 
And you, you have to restart all those things too. Um, in addition to the business side of things and the clients as well. So, um, those are challenges. Those are big things. Uh, moving back to Atlanta, was that uh, getting closer to Maxwell Team Headquarters or anything like that? Yes, because John, cause John has took another role directly yeah. with yeah. The, the organization. Yeah. 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 So, any final thoughts and takeaways that you would want to share on this episode? I think that, you know, from employee to entrepreneurs, if you if you've ever, you know, thought, oh my gosh, what would it be like? starting a business or owning a business, um, just like you said, Joe, you know, what, take a step, take a step out of your comfort zone, go, go set up a meeting with somebody and find out a little bit more, kind of explore what it is that you want to do um, and see if that opportunity grows bigger or if it's like, oh, you know what? I don't even think, really think I do want to do this anymore. So many times, right? We think we want to do something and then we realize once we've started down the path that it's really not for us, but at least you know, and there's so much to to say uh, for that as far as finding out. And then uh, I guess the other thing is, you know, just not doubting yourself and realizing that you're capable of of so much more um, and, you know, it, it helps so much to look back on where we've come. You know, we all talk about looking forward in front of us. Oh. Um, I remember reading a Facebook post of, of a woman that I know who she had gotten ill and she she almost died. And and she had posted on Facebook, you know, about her journey and everything. And she finally did this one post and she said, you know, what keeps me going is looking back to see how far I've come rather than how everybody says, only look ahead of you, you know, don't look behind you. But when we look behind us, that helps give us the confidence to move ahead. I am so glad you brought that up because I view that the same way too. I really do. I, I It's when I've approached something that I thought was daunting you know, I, I, it's good to remind yourself what you have accomplished in the past that, that, that you've gotten through that you thought was daunting at that time when you're moving into it, that, you know, it's going to be okay, you know, <laughs> on the right. other side. So I love that. And you're right. Most, most time you read on this, you hear people talk about it. It's all like, focus forward. Don't let the, and, and you know, the context they're talking about is don't, is, is, is valid as well. But I think they, by painting with too broad a stroke about that rear view mirror kind of perspective. They miss this one about how we can really take encouragement about what we've done in the past. So I just love that. That's great. And I also wanted to go back to the first point you were making, talking about, you know, stepping out of your comfort zone and remembering that you said the way you were wired, you were very process oriented when you were doing that senior business and you and the sales was a little bit like ah, but you were very process oriented. So you had these little steps that you re repeated faithfully, and and there were small bite sized steps probably, but you were you just kept at it. And so I think that's also very very good advice as well to fold in there is that um, break it up, you know, as best you can. Think through what are, what are those small steps and walk walk down that path and, you know, see where it leads. And if it, if it, uh, you know, you don't get joy out of it and you don't feel alignment out of it after a while, then stop. It's exactly. no harm, no foul. Yes. No harm, no foul. Now, you know, exactly. you've learned something, which is a huge benefit. Right. Rather than, yeah, I think one of the biggest things I fear in a way, so I'll use the word fear is I don't want to get to the end of my life with regrets for not trying something that I should have, you know? And uh, of course my wife would say you should dance more, but anyway, we won't go there. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're saying it, Joe, there. Yes. You're, you're regretting not dancing more. Yeah. Uh, there's that song, we should get up and dance, you know, which is kind of in the same spirit. I can't remember who I have to put that in the show notes, but I love that song. <laughs> anyway, this has been a real pleasure. I really appreciate it. Um, so why don't we take a second and I'll pop this up on screen and just 
call out your web address or where people can reach you for more information? Oh, yes. Yeah. So it's uh, griffdevelopment.com. And my YouTube channel is uh, Antoinette Griffin. All right. Awesome. All right. And I'll have it in the show notes as well as I'll pop it up on screen. And so with that, Antoinette, thank you so much for coming on Titans of Transition. You are a Titan with some major positive transitions. So again, we're so pleased to have you. Thank you, Joe. <laughs> Hey, thanks for joining me today on Titans of Transition. I hope you enjoyed the episode. Please check the show notes for additional information.